Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Watchtower Examination, a sequel to the last video. Because I promised therein that I would be demonstrating to you, using the last Watchtower broadcast, the September 2020 Watchtower broadcast, where James Mance is speaking, and I will use only 10 minutes to show you how, if only a Jehovah's Witness was able to think, they would leave that organization. In video 454, I made the point, and I said it in subsequent videos, that if you give a member of the governing body or one of their top speakers 10 minutes, only 10 minutes to speak, one of three things going to happen. Either they tell a lie or they say something that is true but contradicts a lie that they told in the past. Or three, they will say something ridiculous. All that is required is for Jehovah's Witnesses to think. I wonder sometimes if a Jehovah's Witness goes to a watchtower study and they are going through the study and they forget everything that was said previously. I wonder if when they are listening to these speakers, if they are forgetting watchtower doctrines, if they are forgetting the things that were said in the past. And so I've decided to not use the full speech by Mance, but just to take the first 10 minutes and give you so many instances where Jehovah's, that, that shows, that demonstrate that, the, that Jehovah's Witnesses are not thinking. And I only wish that they could learn to think. Because if you could, you would see that something is woefully wrong. And let me just say this before I get into Mance and his presentation. I left the Baptist church because I disagreed with the church on the subject of the Sabbath. But I could go to the Baptist church this Sunday. It is, a, it is plausible. It is not beyond imagination that I could attend the Baptist Church this coming Sunday, sit in that congregation, listen to a sermon, and be in a position to say amen to everything that was said. Because while we disagree on the Sabbath, there are so many other things that they say that are true. I do not believe in Roman Catholicism, I don't believe in this Hail Mary thing and confessing to priests and all of that. But it is plausible that I could sit and listen to a Catholic priest make a presentation for half an hour, an hour, possible. And I say amen to everything that was said, or 90%. It is, why is it so hard to listen to a Jehovah's Witness speaker and not find so many things wrong in just 10 minutes of their presentation. The first time I went to the Kingdom Hall with my brother, I was pleasantly surprised that they made a presentation, a full presentation, to which I found no fault. They were, I think the book was Draw Close to Jehovah, and they were looking on nature, God's wonderful creation, and they've made some scientific facts about the solar system and all of that, and it was good. And I smiled and I said to myself, finally, I watched our presentation that I can say amen to from the beginning to the end. At the end of the presentation, the gentleman said, you can only find this information. You can't. He's you can't. 
get this information at any university, only at a kingdom hall. Oh boy. Just after a good presentation, he had to spoil it. And then he decided to make it worse. No, not he. Another speaker came. After the presentation, another person came encouraging Jehovah's Witnesses to distribute the old magazines. And he said to them, you and I know that the information will never be irrelevant. Really? So I wondered, is it possible that you can attend a kingdom hall and not hear some untruth, some ridiculous thing? What is wrong with this organization and why is it that Jehovah's Witnesses can't see? And the answer is what I'm about to present to you. They do not think. Let us hear James Mance in the September 2020 JW broadcast. Imagine the astonished look on the faces of the apostles. The resurrected Jesus stands before them on the Mount of Olives just before he disappears into the clouds. The Watchtower teaches that Jesus was, was resurrected in spirit, no body. He had no physical body. But he had to put on flesh so that the disciples could see him. And James is pointing out here that he disappeared into the clouds, which means that the disciples could see him. They could see him at least until he got into the clouds so that his physical body had to maintain that physical body so they could see him ascend. Have Jehovah's Witnesses read that while they were there standing, an angel appeared to them asking, Why are you standing gazing? Because this same Jesus, who has, who you've seen ascend, I am paraphrasing, that you will see him return in like manner. How then can Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus will be coming back in spirit form, contradicting John saying, Behold, he comes, and every eye shall see him. The watchtower is saying no, because he is a spirit. So couldn't the same Jesus, the way he descended in spirit, put on body and return so that every eye will see him? Doesn't that make sense to you? Do you not see a little flaw there when you listen to the first minute of the September 2020 broadcast? Jesus makes this profound declaration as recorded at Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the most distant part of the earth. What an assignment! What an assignment! What an amazing assignment! Because that's the word they used to at the Kingdom Hall, assignment. You will be given an assignment. You will be assigned to this territory or that territory. What an amazing assignment that the apostles got. James just read the scriptures. An amazing assignment that they got. What was this amazing assignment? 
you will be witnesses of me. Who was speaking? Jesus. Have you not wondered why then you are not witnesses of Jesus? Why are you not Jesus' witnesses, but Jehovah's witnesses? Why are you boasting that you are the only ones who are going around preaching as Jesus commanded, but you are not Jesus' witnesses, Jehovah's witnesses? Has it dawned on you that the apostles were Jesus' witnesses, but you are Jehovah's witnesses? And what is it that is wrong with what the apostles were that you do not want to be it. Why are you not Jesus' witnesses? An amazing assignment, isn't it? They were to preach the good news of God's kingdom throughout the earth. Those disciples must have felt overwhelmed and wondered how such a small band of preachers could ever get this work done. They were supposed to preach the good news of the kingdom. Are you preaching the same good news of the kingdom that they were preaching? They were preaching salvation by Jesus. They were preaching that Jesus is the Messiah. They were preaching that the man you crucified is the Son of God. They were preaching that he has gone and that he will be com coming back. He will be coming back. Are you preaching the same gospel? Because you are preaching that he returned. That he returned in 1914. And you're going to make the statement now that, hey, they lived before 1914, so they had to preach a different gospel. Has Jesus returned in 1914? If Jesus returned in 1914, why are you not in paradise? What is this thing about this presence of Jesus that not one Jehovah's Witness that I have met can explain? And so the question that you need to think about having listened to that Jehovah's Witnesses is the apostles were not preaching the good news of the presence of Jesus because you believe that they were not in the presence of Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Can you explain the invisible presence of Jesus in 1914? Invisible presence, but he is not here. He is in heaven. What does presence mean? Have you thought about it? Ten days later, they received the promised Holy Spirit, and they got to work. True, they faced many challenges, but that did not stop them. Three years passed, and the preaching work was expanded to include Gentiles. We can read the moving account in Acts chapter 10. First, an angel of God appears to the God-fearing army officer Cornelius. Then Peter responds to the leadings of God's Spirit to go to the officer's home. There, Peter gives a thorough witness about Jesus, not only to Cornelius, but also to his family and friends. Do you, as Jehovah's Witnesses, think about your doctrines, think about your principles, Think about Watchtower Dogma when you are listening to these men speak, when you are watching these videos. Why is it that Peter has a beard? Why is it that the Watchtower keeps portraying Bible characters with a beard, but it is wrong for you to wear one? Does that make sense to you? Are you thinking? Another question. 
Why is it that Peter did not tell this God-fearing army officer that he needs to leave the army? Are you seeing the difference between your gospel and the apostles' gospel? Because the apostles weren't going around telling anybody about Christian neutrality. Peter did not tell Cornelius that he needed to leave the army because now he is a Christian and he must be neutral. In fact, James Mance is declaring Cornelius, the army officer, as a God-fearing army officer. Peter declared that Cornelius had the Holy Spirit. No instruction whatsoever to leave the army. What's the difference between your gospel and Peter's gospel? As he concludes his discourse, Peter explains the commission he received to be an evangelizer. Let's open to Acts 10, 42, and note the two main aspects of the preaching work started by Jesus. Also, he ordered us to preach to the people and to give a thorough witness that this is the one decreed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. First, Jesus commanded his disciples to preach to the people. In addition, they were to give a thorough witness. The disciples were to search out honest-hearted deserving ones. That would require a thorough coverage of their territory. Just in case you did not see the previous video, let me ask you the question. You just listened to James Mance reading the Bible. Did you see anything there about searching for honest-hearted ones who are... Let me hear the words again. The disciples were to search out honest-hearted deserving ones. Honest-hearted deserving ones. Did you see anything of the sort in the scripture that James Mans just read? Also, they were to give a thorough witness. A thorough witness of what? A thorough witness that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is judge, that it is Jesus to whom they will have to answer at the judgment. Are you preaching that? And again, I ask you, where is the instruction in the Bible about looking for honest-hearted, deserving ones? It is not for you to determine who, de who is deserving. Your job is just to pre present the word. It is the righteous judge, the very thing that Peter is declaring to the world, that Jesus will be judged. It is Jesus who will judge who is deserving of salvation, not you. Your job is to preach the word. Mans is not giving you the pure, unadulterated gospel. He is giving you a watchtower gospel, which is different from what is in the scriptures. In spite of vicious persecution, Christians in the first century obeyed Jesus' command to preach and to bear thorough witness. And by about 60 of our common era, less than 30 years after the Christians had received their commission, Paul could write to the congregation in Colossae that the good news had been preached in all creation under heaven. What a testimony to the power of God's Holy Spirit and the faith, zeal, and determination of those early disciples. In the late 1800s, a small group of Bible students rose to the challenge of bearing thorough witness. An article in the April 1881 issue of Zion's Watchtower had the thrilling title, Wanted 1,000 Preachers. Think Jehovah's Witnesses. Think. I submit to you 
that if you are able to think, you will see how false a religion this is. This man has just spoken to you about how the disciples gave a thorough witness. What did they witness about? Jesus Christ. And they presented the truth. Now he comes telling you that in the 1800s, some Bible students rose to the challenge to give a thorough witness. And then he presents to you the magazine with the title Zion's Watchtower, Herald of Christ's Presence. Do you know what that meant? I give you a watchtower statement from the 1970s. Hence, when C.T. Russell began publishing a new religious magazine in July 1879, it was called Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence. It was heralding Christ's presence as having begun in 1874. They were teaching, they were preaching that Jesus returned invisibly in 1874. Is James Mance apologizing to you for the error that they preached? Is James Mance telling you that they were going around preaching a false doctrine? Is James Mance admitting that they rose to the challenge of spreading a falsehood? No. This dishonest person is telling you, after speaking about the apostles, the servants of Christ, who delivered, who witnessed about Christ, the truth about Christ, is now telling you about these people in the early, late 1800s who rose to the challenge to tell you a vicious lie about Jesus. And he doesn't even have the shame to admit to you that it is a lie. A century later, more than a century later, the watchtower is telling you that these people rose to the challenge and dare to show you herald of Christ's presence. And they show you the big lie. But they move down to the part that is going to tickle your ears because you do not Think. Today, Jehovah's Witnesses are bearing witness in 240 lands, but doing so has its challenges. What are some of those challenges, and what can we do to meet them? Many of our brothers face the challenge of long distances, climate extremes, rough terrain, and poor travel conditions. In some areas, just getting to meet people is a challenge. To add to the challenge, Revelation 14.6 reminds us that the good news would be declared to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. This can require learning a new language and understanding different religious, ethnic, and cultural backgrounds. This is only five minutes into man's presentation. And I can imagine how you, as a Jehovah's Witness, must be feeling proud. When you look at how the gospel, in your, from your perspective, how the gospel is being presented in all the world. When you see how Jehovah's Witnesses are going along the highways and the byways and all the crevices and corners of the world, 
to preach the gospel. When you see Jehovah's Witnesses presenting watchtower literature to persons, doesn't that make you feel proud? Think about the times when people were going in the highways and byways, in every crevice and corner of the world, issuing those lovely magazines that were telling them that the prophet Joel prophesied that you as Jehovah's Witnesses would be doing this mighty work and used the symbolism of locusts to represent you? How do you feel now to think that that is not true? Have you thought about the times when you were issuing those wonderful literature that was telling people that Gog of Magog was Satan? How does it feel when you were telling these people, you were issuing those magazines just a few years ago, telling people that Jesus appointed the faithful and discreet slave over all his belongings? Isn't it a little cringeworthy to think, to think, Jehovah's Witnesses, if you would only think? Is it not a little cringeworthy to think that you have not gone back to those persons? And if you were to find the courage to go back to them, have you thought about what you would say to them? Uh, I know we gave you that magazine. And I know we told you that we were appointed over the master, the slave was appointed over all the master's belongings in 1919. Uh, but, uh, well, we found out it's, it's not really true. But, you see, you, you have to understand that it is Jehovah who gives the slave the information, but, but it wasn't quite time yet for Jehovah to reveal to the slave. And so beca because Jehovah's time didn't come. We just thought we would share with you another explanation until Jehovah time comes. Have you thought about it? Is that what you are going to tell people? But the worst part of it, do you even think to go back to these people and tell them that what you taught them was wrong? How do you feel if you think about going back to all the people and you go knock on a door and someone comes out and said, how may I help you? And you're thinking, uh, when I came, I met... A man it was not oh he used to live here he's now moved are you gonna try and find him have you thought about it Jehovah's Witnesses and who do you think what do you think if you can think if the person was to say oh I am sorry he passed away have you thought about how you will never have the opportunity to tell him that you were wrong? Have you thought about it? I promised you 10 minutes of Saranko, but I'm going to close with this one last thing. Not Saranko, my apologies, James Mance. But I'm going to 
close with one last thing that he said. Jesus warned that opposers would try to hinder or stop the preaching work. No doubt you are facing some form of challenge in your local territory. We cannot begin to give possible solutions to all the obstacles we face today. But it is helpful to learn how others are coping with their challenges, and this can stimulate our thinking. Did he say stimulate your thinking? Because I am asking you the very question, Jehovah's Witnesses, do you think? And oh, how I wish. And that is why I'm going to be closing here. Because I believe that that is a high point on which to close. That idea of stimulate, stimulating your thinking. Do you think? Can you think about the, few, the things I mentioned so far in the first five to six minutes of James' presentation, James Mans? Just a few minutes. I could give you so much to think about. The question is, will that stimulate your thinking? And this is the last thing I want you to think about. As I, as I ask you to think about everything that I've said so far, how is it that... Sir, what, is we, what is it with me and Siranko? <laughs> that James Mance could have spoken for such a short time and someone, a critic if you wish, could find so many things to speak about in just five minutes. Think about it, that it is the same critic who went to a kingdom hall on his first visit, listened to an entire presentation, and didn't find any fault until at the end. What is it about what these men are speaking about. I ask you, I so hope and pray that indeed this will stimulate your thinking. In the meantime, please take a second to support this channel by clicking the like button. The more likes this video gets, the more YouTube will recommend to non-subscribers. That one small act of yours can help another Jehovah's Witness as these videos have been proven to do. There are so many things that you could be doing now, but you are here watching this video and I am so appreciative of it. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.